Okay. So I'm going to call this meeting to order, and we're going to do the Pledge of the Flag. I pledge allegiance to pledge the flag of the, flag the flag United, United, United States, States, States of America, America. America. and republic the republic for which, for which it stands, one, one nation, one nation, one God, one God, one God, God for liberty, and for all. For all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving right along. Motion to appoint district clerk pro temp. Be it resolved that the Board of Education appoint Deborah Pottenberg as district clerk pro temp for the July 7th, 2020 organizational meeting at the, of the Board of Education. Can I have a motion? I'll make that motion. motion. Move. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Edgar. Okay. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do now is I'm going to administer the oath to the office of the newly elected board members and the re-elected board members. So, Destiny, I'm going to start with you. Okay, so, Destiny, if you could repeat after me. I, Destiny Hollenbeck. I, Destiny Hollenbeck. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the Board of Education. Of the Board of Education. In and for the Chatham Central School okay. District according to the best of my ability. In and for the Chatham Central School District to the best of my ability. Okay, congratulations and welcome aboard. Thank you. Welcome aboard, Destiny. Welcome aboard, Destiny. <laughs> welcome, Destiny. Thank you. Okay, and then I'm going to move on to the re-elected board member, Matthew Fish. Okay, Matthew, repeat after me. I'm Matthew Fish. I'm Matthew Fish. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. And I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the Board of Education. Of the Board of Education. In and for the Chatham Central School District. And and for the Chatham Central School District. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Thank you, Matt. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back, Matt. <laughs> okay, now I'm going to move on to Patricia Wilson. I, Patricia Wilson. I, Patricia Wilson. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of. And I will just faithfully discharge the duties of. The Board of Education. The Board of Education. In and for the Chatham Central School District. In and for the Chatham Central School District. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Okay, welcome back. Oh, Welcome back, Pat. Back. <laughs> and then um, at some point, you guys are going to need to get in touch with me so you can come and sign the oath. Okay. So I need a motion to approve the present agenda as written. Do I have a motion? Motion. motion. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? So, R1, be it resolved that the Board of Education appoint Deborah Pottenberg as district clerk for the Chatham Central School District for the 2020-2021 fiscal year at a stipend of $3,700 per year. Do I have a motion? Motion. Oh, motion. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Any opposed? <laughs> okay, motion carries. And now I'm going to have Sal give me the oath. Repeat after me, please. I, Deborah Pottenberg, do solemnly affirm. I, Deborah Pottenberg, do so solemnly affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution, the Constitution. <laughs> and the Constitution of the United States of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of district clerk. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of district clerk. In and for the Chatham Central School District. In and for the Chatham Central School District. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Gab, if you'd run into my office later and sign this. <laughs> <laughs> And now I'm going to turn around and give our oath to our superintendent, Dr. Salvatore D'Angelo. I, Salvatore D'Angelo. I, Salvatore D'Angelo. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the superintendent. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of the superintendent. In and for the Chatham Central School District. In and for the Chatham Central School District. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Okay, thank you. Okay, at this time now, what I'd like to do is I'd like to call for statements of intent to seek the nomination of the board officer. Do I have someone who'd like to make a statement? Um, I guess this is Craig. I guess um, I'd like to uh, take a stab at uh, President again and see if we could uh, work together like we have in the past and uh, help Sal out and help the district out. So, um. Okay. Do I have anyone else? This is Pat. I'd like to state my intent to seek the position of vice president. Okay. I board for two years and been on policy and finance and uh, feel I can dedicate some time this year to helping out as best as I can. Okay. Thank you, Pat. So at this time then, I'm going to call for nominations for the Office of the President of the Board of Education. This is so Muriel. do I have a motion? This is Muriel. I'd like to um, nominate Craig Simmons for President. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Is there any other nominations, just to be, make sure of them, we're clear. Okay, all in favor for Craig? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, congratulations, Craig. Thank so you. now what I'm going to do is I'm going to give the oath to Craig Simmons as board president. <clears throat> okay, repeat after me, Craig. I, Craig Simmons. I, Craig Simmons. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties. I will faithfully discharge the duties. Of the Board of Education President. As the Board of Education President. In and for the Chatham Central School District. In and for the Chatham Central School District. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Okay, congratulations. You are now the president of the board and you will continue on now with the agenda.
starting off with a nomination for the vice president. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you, everybody, and thanks, Deb. Congratulations, Sal. Um, welcome, Destiny. Um, so we got a nomination from Pat. Is there anybody else interested in vice president? All right, well, All right, I'd like so to. So we're going to ask for a motion to nominate Pat for vice president. Yeah. This is Denise. I nominate Can I get Pat. a uh, motion? Okay, so Denise moved. made the first motion. Second? I second, second. it. Okay. So All in favor? Who's first? Who was first? Denise. I have Denise. Denise Barry first, and I believe okay. it was Graham second. Correct. All right. Um, all in favor? All in favor. Aye. Anybody opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Thank you. Okay. Congratulations to both of you. Now I'm going to administer the oath of office to Pat. Okay. I, Patricia Wilson. I, Patricia Wilson. Do solemnly affirm. Do solemnly affirm. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And the Constitution of the State of New York. And that I will faithfully discharge the duties of. And then I will faithfully just start, just discharge the duties of <clears throat> Board of Education Vice President. The Board of Education Vice President. In and for the Chatham Central School District. In and for the Chatham Central School District. According to the best of my ability. According to the best of my ability. Okay. Congratulations. All right. Congratulations. Uh, I think we've been here before. Uh, seems funny, but we're starting off with R2, right? Yes, we are. Uh, second res resolution of the year. Uh, R2, be it resolved that the Board of Education established the following standard workday for Chatham Central School District employees. These titles are reported to employees, retirement system, ERS, as required by the New York State and local retirement system effective July 1st, 2020. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. A second? Any okay. questions or concerns or all in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Motion moves. <clears throat> All right, Deb, you used to spoil me a lot with your highlights. So I know, so can now flip the page. Yeah, and then uh, we're going we're on to our, we're R3. Organizational meeting. <laughs> R3. R3, uh, be it resolved that the Board of Education accept the consensus agenda of the July 7th, 2020 organizational meeting as written. Can I get a motion? Don't move. This is Muriel. Okay. Second. Graham. Any okay. questions? Comments or questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right. Carries. Okay, Craig, now you can flip all the way to page 20. and start with um, letter K. Just want to make sure I didn't um, skip over. 
Okay, so we're on to uh, resolution four, R4. That is correct, under policy and code of ethics. Yep. R4, be it resolved that the policies and code of ethics of the Board of Education continue in force for the current fiscal year, unless duly modified. Can I get a motion? Motion. Motion. Second. Any questions? Questions or comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, carries. Thank you. Uh, be it resolved that the Board of Education adopt the board handbook unless duly modified. Um, again, I get a motion on that. Motion. Uh, questions and comments. Uh, Destiny, have you had the opportunity to see our handbook? Yes, yes. I have. Uh, oh, great, great. Um, Rachel, uh, me and Rachel saw a flaw. The board worked hard on this, and it, it should help all new coming and even some uh, of us that have been here a while to uh, identify uh, some questions or help answer some questions or go about how to ask the questions. So um, it's, a, it's a nice nice piece. Yep. So, uh, um, great. So uh, any other questions or comments on that? Handbook? All in favor? Aye. Uh, Aye. Anybody opposed? All right, carries. Uh, we're at a stage uh, where we have a board, me board uh, member comment section. Um, this is where we can kind of propose some new ideas uh, or just simply uh, talk about some of the things that uh, we've done around the school or some of the things that have happened that we know about. Um, with uh, you know, my, my I'd start it off. My uh, board comment would be: I think that the uh, graduation went off um, without a hitch, uh, in in bad times. It was the most incredible graduation I've ever attended, and I wanted to thank everybody that worked so hard and was involved in that. Um, I already know class of 2021's wondering what we got up our sleeves, so. <laughs> Whoever's out there listening right now, <laughs> uh, it, it uh, we we may have a new. Well, they keep talking about a new new day, so I don't know if we can match that again. But uh, it was incredible. I want to thank everybody. Well, Craig, Anybody I want to. This is Muriel. I want to back up what you said. I can't imagine how many people were working in the background on that graduation. I'm sure that so many administrators and teachers had did so much work on that and i agree with you it was so perfect and i thank everybody for all the work they put in okay and i'd like to to chime in there too that i thought it was extremely um over the it was phenomenal um and the parade afterwards i i think it really made chatham's graduation this year extremely special and i again thank everybody who was involved in putting it all together um uh, i'd like to make a they want to... yeah i'd like to make a board comment go ahead matt so uh, a couple weeks ago i floored a proposal to have the, the district report to the board on diversity and inclusion efforts um here at chatham and some of the wording in my uh, proposal uh was ill-conceived so um you know i i am aware many of our stakeholders work really hard to compassionately support our student body and for any upfront i uh, i apologize you know i'm 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 proud of the work that goes on here. I know the staff take the school motto to heart, and um, that's why I committed five districts to uh, five children to the district uh, a couple of years ago. Um, so, but also, you know, from a community perspective, a lot of what happens here in Chatham schools, you know, it's it's behind closed doors and and they're locked. Um, and as a board member, you know, I have 
I have greater insight into what goes on at school than many people, but one of our responsibilities here in this forum is to ask these questions um, that are on the mind of the public. So um, I'm looking forward to hearing about some of the, the great success stories uh, about what goes on here. And, uh, and I look forward to continuing to support um, those, uh, those efforts. Thank you very much, Matt. Um, you're a valued, valued uh, member of the team, and uh, we'll uh, we'll get working right away on uh, pulling, pulling all this together. Denise, did you have a comment? Uh, no, going back to graduation, I just want to uh, add, add my opinion, which I thought was outstanding, and the parade was out of this world. That's my <laughs> only comment. Thank you. Yes. Yep. All right. Uh, thanks, everybody. Uh, we're going to move along to uh, superintendent's report. So at the risk of sounding extremely redundant, um, but I will anyway, because um, I thought graduation was amazing as well. And, and as you've mentioned, uh, there were a lot of teachers, administrators, parents and community members involved in making it such. Um, I've had several community members reach out uh, and express um, uh, their excitement about it. And, uh, and, and it seems like there, we may have created a new tradition or at least set a new bar uh, for future graduations. And, and, and that's, a, that's a great thing. Um, the, the procession to the high school was, was, um, was magical. Um, and, and it really kind of allowed us to do something just slightly different for a senior class that was cheated out of so much. And I think the fact that it was unique um, put uh, kind of a, um, uh, a, an accent on, on their year for them. And so I, I am very pleased. A um, couple other things, our new facility, facilities director is on board. Uh, he started July 1st, he's hit the ground running. He's been part of uh, construction meetings and part of staff meetings and um, he's really energetic and knowledgeable uh, the staff seems to the, the, the maintenance operations and maintenance staff seems to have received him with open arms and I'm pleased that we're off to a really positive start with um, with that that position in light of um, Steve's retirement the, um, the the big unknown right now and the question that's asked on a daily basis by many is what does, what does the fall look like? Um, and unfortunately, right now, as we sit, as I sit here, there's still quite a few unknowns. Um, but we're getting closer. The, it's reported uh, in the governor's press conference yesterday uh, that you know districts are required to develop a plan. Initially, he had said sometime in July, he has not put a deadline on that. But he also said the other day that um, don't confuse a plan with a decision, any decision that's been made to, as to whether we will return or not. But what's worth mentioning is the fact that um, the task force, several of them across the state that have been formed and have met, will be, be reporting out to the Board of Regents on July 13th. And as superintendents across the state uh, and other school officials, so, so urgently need is more information about what guidelines we will be uh, have to follow in the fall. So we're hopeful that shortly at the 13th or shortly thereafter, uh, we will have much more information about the context of which um, we will be opening, uh, as well as information that some of the lobbying agencies are working with the governor to urge him to make some, uh, some decisions sooner than later. Uh, and, and that will be very helpful. So uh, the administrators and I met as late as today. We continue our conversations uh, about uh, different categories like facilities and transportation and food service and all the different um, aspects of what it might look like when, when, we, when and if we come back um, in, in the fall. So I just want to uh, reassure the board that this is kind of really the top priority right now. We follow it if not on a daily, on an hourly basis. We've looked at um, guidance from the CDC, guidance from the New York State um, uh, Governor's Office, guidance from the, the um, uh, State Education Department, as well as plans that have come forth from other states, um, you know, trying to learn from them uh, as well. Based on some feedback that I think it was Beth that gave last meeting, 
Uh, we are also planning a parent survey. Uh, we are in the process of hopefully finalizing that this week and we'll administer that um, within the next week or so. We're, we're kind of deciding, you know, if we wait a little bit and we have some additional guidance, we may be able to ask some better, more specific questions of parents. But at a minimum, we have to kind of get a sense for where parents are, kind of a temperature reading on where they are about um, their comfort in whether they send their students back, whether they would participate in transportation, should, trans should they be eligible and transportation be available. There's a lot of a myriad of questions and we've um, reached out to some other districts who done a survey in the last few weeks to learn what some of the questions they're asking so that we can build our own survey to help better inform our decision making. Um, I know it's probably going to bring up more questions than we have answers to, but at least we're going to be, you know, getting all the stakeholders involved in understanding what's on their minds so that we can at least make an attempt at, at, at addressing everyone's concerns. Our top priority, or one of our, our priorities, will be to make sure that if we're opening and physically bringing the students back, we do that in, in a very safe uh, and effective manner. So that, that's kind of just a little bit of an insight. I know that's what's on everybody's mind, and uh, we'll continually update the board and the community as to the progress that we make um, on that front. And that's my comments for tonight. I have a question. Um, I, the task force will re report by July 13th to the Board of Regents, correct? There are, I just want to be clear, there were several task force. Yes. Um, the one that um, the State Education Department put together yeah, yes. is going to be reporting to the Board of Regents on the 13th. They meet on right. the 13th and 14th. And what's re been in, reported in the press is that they feel that on those days or shortly thereafter, um, the urgency for them to come out with some very definitive guidelines for districts to be able to establish plans is going to be very important. So that's our hope. That by do, next the week, regions uh, have, do the regions have to report this to the governor before well, re anything remember, No, so the regions um, are, the regions um, are, um, the board of regions are, are in control of the commissioner. Yes. So, uh, the commissioner and hopefully the governor's office are in discussions. Okay. Um, but the governor has his own uh, task force that's informing his leadership. And so we're hoping that everyone's talking to each other, including, you know, uh, the New York State Council of School Superintendents, the <coughs> State uh, Association of uh, Teachers, you know, everyone's trying to provide information to mm -hmm. these entities so that they can make it. It would appear, and understandably so, that uh, you know, the governor uh, has been all along um, basing his decisions on data and science. And so, you know, he, I, I believe he's waiting to get as close as possible to the return um, so that we don't have to do this more than once, you know. Uh, it, it appears by his comments that he feels that at this point we're just a little too far away from that. But there's got to be a balance between the distance um, away from the decision and our ability to have to put some plans in place. Uh, you know, there's a lot of scenarios and we want to try to figure out how we can narrow down those different scenarios based on their guidance. For instance, um, you know, the ability to have this meeting virtually um, was not updated till yesterday. It expired yeah. yesterday and it was updated yesterday. Those are the kinds of things that quite honestly have frustrated school administrators across the state um, and we understand the circumstances but it's tough when the community doesn't see it makes us look kind of foolish that we don't have answers to questions that they have so I, I was just trying to figure out i've been writing this down i'm just trying to figure out how many layers there were before we could actually make a decision but i think i understand it now I, if i didn't already i have a document i'm going to send you it was an article that really um, outline some of the challenges in terms of, um, you know, if the governor doesn't, I've mentioned this before, if the governor doesn't waive our ability to remotely educate students, regardless of whether a parent decides they want to keep their student home or not, yeah. it, that's out of our control. They, yes. they can keep their student home, but they may have to homeschool them as opposed to us providing remote learning. So th those are all those um, yeah. different kinds of scenarios. Beth has her hands up, hand up too. Craig, so I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, go ahead, Beth. Um, I guess my question is, have you, as administrators, been kind of throwing around different options so that we're, you know, 
you're not at the last minute trying to pull everything together if everything is pushed off to the end like unfortunately it has been by the governor and the and the federal administration yeah no yeah we you know we we, we are doing scenario planning you know um we've thrown out ideas of or some hybrids um what will and and mainly what will classrooms look like if we're bringing a portion of our students back what will transportation we're getting a small glimpse in terms of the couple students that we have uh, already in the extended school year program of outplaced students we have two students you know but just an example of the fact that we're you know do we do we take temperatures before students get on the bus do we not some guidelines right now don't require it others suggest it if we do that who does that do we need we don't have bus aids on every bus there's so every every subcategory that we go down there's a myriad of unanswered questions and that simple question that, that question in itself could be answered in one guideline, right? Students do not have, to, I'm not saying it's good or bad, students do not have to be screened before they enter the school building. That alone takes that right off the table for us. We know that we don't have to make additional provisions, some of which may have some financial impact to consider having to screen students before they get on the bus. Um, there, there's a variety, and I don't want to go, and I don't want to take up all your time tonight, but there's a variety of concerns, right? Okay, so it's not only who does it, but is it part of their job? If it's not part of their job, is that part of a contra contractual negotiations? Is it a change in work conditions? There's, it's so multifaceted that it quickly becomes um, very overwhelming. Um, you know, but yes, to answer your question, we um, we are we're staying with three or four different basic scenarios. Matt, go. Matt, you got your hand up. Yeah, just like a, a point of order here, because um, this subject is not going to go away. It touches everything on our agenda, every every meeting for, for the foreseeable future. So, um, you know, in terms of organizing the meeting flow, should we um, should we bring be bringing up this topic, you know, on every item? or should we be sectioning off the meeting? I know probably I should have said that earlier when we accepted agenda, but. Um. Well, um, I, maybe I can help answer you. I, I understand what you're saying. And um, I'm just realizing right now, I didn't set up the agenda, but we don't have um, uh, our normal uh, future agenda spot. Um, which Destiny, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll touch base with you and, and explain um, some of the ways we do stuff. Of course, it's in the handbook too, but uh, I'll reach out to you anyways. Uh, but um, yeah, I get what you're saying, Matt. And one of the things that I want to discuss, I'm sorry, Sal, are, are you done with your report right I, now? I'm just entertaining questions. Or I, I know this is, okay. So um, I'd just like to uh, add in some uh, some importance, some pieces I want to come to right now. Um, in the past, we've, so our next several meetings, next month, um, we're going to pass uh, a lot of opportunities to get some stuff done early. And the most, I, I feel one of the most important things is some of the subject you're talking about, Matt, and, and Beth, um, kind of knowing what, because every, everybody out there is asking us, what are we going to do? Like, what are we going to do? I've been studying all the, some of these top colleges and trying to figure it out and they're, everybody's all over the place. So I don't see a, a, a model yet that we could try to work on or expect on, on your subject of um, how to handle a, these meetings, reopening, uh, dealing with, you know, getting public input. But so that's an object, you know, that's something that we ac actually, need to discuss probably a little further and um, we'll be working on that immediately. Um, one of my other things that I feel right along these lines is we've got to get working on getting um, our teachers negotiations caught up. Um, we got them hanging out there, you know, a little bit. Um, we need to get together. I'd love to do uh, some type of – Deb in the past has done like a – I don't know if I if it was Survey Monkey, but we dialed in a time and a date. But I'd like to call for some type of um, executive session meeting or a special meeting 
um, within the next couple of weeks, hopefully, because we have some, uh, we just, to move forward with what Beth and Matt are talking about, we got to, we really got to work side by side with our teachers and we need to get that, uh, we need to get our uh, contracts in order. And I'd like to um, put a, you know, there could be a board project, it can be a special project. We need to take advantage of Graham while we have them. And um, um, so I, I hope everybody's in agreement on that and uh, we can put something together somewhat soon. I know some people are probably vacant wanting, I don't know how vacations are going for anybody. They're not going well here. <laughs> so we might as well work. But uh, if you got any feedback on any of that that I just said, chime in, please. All right, we could put out a little doodle poll tomorrow. Um, we can have Deb or Diane send it to the board and that will at least let you know people's availability and hopefully we can catch a date or two that everyone is available and that'll at least give us some insight and um you know we can um i i, I believe and it may it be your call i mean we certainly can do it virtual like this in a private um password protected room but i also think that we could um properly socially distance with proper ppe in either um the library here which is air conditioned or if we had to um uh, the cafeteria is a little bit larger, but yet not air conditioned. Uh, and I think having a executive session where I can, um, you know, you have at least one new board member, Graham and, and uh, Muriel were a part of the negotiating team where we can kind of, it's been a while since we've been at the table because we initially went to impasse, but where I could, um, and the team could update the entire board as to at least where we were. Um, but as you've alluded to, the union has expressed uh, interest in, um, uh, continuing negotiations this summer it had not been an option in the past but they are more than willing to come uh, back with the district and have conversations so I would look forward to uh, participating in an executive session and I would hope that we could do that uh, in the next couple weeks I, I, I um, how's everybody else feel I mean would you we could put it on the uh, doodle or we could probably show a hand right now are we everybody accustomed to social distancing and being prepared if we were able to meet in person on this yeah um, yes you, you know what I'm, ha I, I'm I'm butting in here this is Miriam because I don't know how to raise my hand on this computer can somebody come <laughs> <laughs> can scroll somebody down come? below it's fun huh you can, yeah. you can clap too down at the bottom there should be like a panel that says uh, participants yes if you click on that a separate little screen or side screen is going to open up and show you who's in the meeting yes and then at the bottom of your participants list raise hand I found it <laughs> thank you okay go great. ahead and raise your hand Muriel great I'm, I'm raising my hand and that's great that um, I, I'd love to do a meeting social distance absolutely Destiny, you have a feeling for? Um, I agree there. Um, I've done everything basically virtually lately, but I uh, wouldn't mind seeing human spaces uh, in person. So I can do both. Matt, how do you feel about it? Uh, I, I would, uh, I'm a strong supporter of the in-person meeting. I think we've got um, tens of thousands of square feet without students in it. We can figure this out pretty easily. Yeah, Beth? I have no problem. I mean, I've been working virtually, not virtually, but, you know, I'm out there as a realtor with a mask and everything, but I think we social, I also know how to social distance and feel very comfortable. Pat? I'm fine with, with an in-person meeting. All right, Graham, how do you feel? I would much rather do it virtually, but uh, if that's the consensus, then I will follow it. I, I'd also like to add that I think it's probably pretty easy for us to rig up a projector or a TV anywhere and and split the meeting, and that's fine as well. It's what we were planning to do tonight in the in the library here with a large, um, you know, 60, 70 inch display. So we could accommodate a hybrid as well. 
What about Denise? Uh, Denise, how do you feel about meeting up with us with the mask? I'm totally in favor of it. I have no problem with it whatsoever. Okay. Well, we won't have to add that to our uh, doodle, and then we can pin down uh, some uh, okay. dates and times. And I'd like, I think it's important. And uh, like I said, I, 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 if I don't want to put you under any pressure, Graham, but I was really actually counting on you. You have the uh, board's knowledge on this, on what we're going to be uh, going over the most. Yeah, I, think I, think, I, I don't think that I would be able to present it in any better sense in person than I would virtually, but uh, I can I can be there in person. I I'd, I'd appreciate it, and uh, um, we'll, we'll keep you safe, buddy. We'll keep you safe. Hey, it's Megan. Don't mind me. Um, oh, sorry, Meg. <laughs> sure. You know, I just work here. Um, I am for any option that you guys would like to go with, um, but not next week because I am vacationing and I will not be working. So if you could do two weeks, <laughs> that would be fantastic. For the sake okay. of just talking about this, you know, we typically meet on Tuesdays. Um, and, and, and taking Meg's comments into um, perspective, would Tuesday the 21st on an off chance work for everyone? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. We, we wouldn't have to go through the doodle poll. We would know. Yeah. Um, I'm good with it. Let me double check. Um, no, I'm fine. So we've got um, Beth. I heard Denise. Muriel. Muriel's okay. Craig, do you see I'm you good. good with that? I'm good with that. Yeah, that, that should work for me as well. Okay, Graham. It was that that's thing? I mean, Matt, is that work for yeah, you? Yeah, that, that's good. Excellent. Same time. Your call, but I would say six o'clock. Let's do it early. Yeah. Um, I, I would I would say that it you know, we probably we're probably looking at a couple hours. Um, you know, we, we've got um, some decent detail to go over to just bring you up to speed and then I think uh, you know discussions to where we want to go from there. Yeah, is, Lu is Lucas still on? Yeah, oh, you know, Lucas is there. Uh, I am. Yep, I am. Yeah. Lucas, is that the week you're away? Uh, what? It is, but I can remote in. That's fine. Which uh, room are you uh, thinking? MED? Well, cafeteria? Uh, cafeteria yeah. would give us more flexibility to spread out and 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 uh, facilitate it. That's it's what I was thinking. Go. Just and then kinda. if it ends up being like a very um, ninety muggy day and it's uncomfortable in there, we could always convene to the uh, to the library to, to the library. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Right. Well, thank you guys. Uh, I think it's a uh, Mr. Chotty, important um, that we all get together, and we, it's an important thing that we got to. Mike, are you available? I'll be there. Okay. None, none All of, right, Mike. None of, the, none of this works unless we know we can afford it. So. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Um, so I guess that that's it. We'll move on to R6 and we'll Try to get this meeting over with. If nobody else has any more concerns or comments on any of that. R6, be it resolved that the Board of Education adopt the professional development plan as presented at the June 23rd, 2020 board meeting. Can I get a motion? motion. Don't move. Second. Second. Any questions or comments? Uh, I've got questions. So for, ahead, the COVID, for the COVID section of this agenda item, like every other, um, I just want to talk theoretically through a scenario where um, whether we're um, mandated to be all remote or there's a state mandate to offer remote. If we're in a rem remote learning scenario and staff and students have the option of being remote, how does that impact our PD days and our schedule here? Well, um, so we have four um, conference days, and we had a discussion um, today 
as well as to whether strategically we want to make any changes there. Um, but right now, uh, we fully, last year we went to a model where we uh, front ended two days together as opposed to just the first day because we fully believe that the providing more professional development earlier in the year makes makes sense as opposed to back ending it when the school year is kind of um, on its way, you know, ending. So this year we had discussions that those first two days would still remain um, conference days, professional development days. They may just take on a different look and feel than it has in the past, less about handing out certificates and certainly not getting together in large groups and more focused on what the reality that we're facing in terms of our instructional delivery um, might be. Again, we don't have the benefit of having the teachers available this summer, uh, except for some curriculum, curriculum development that's going, uh, that's taking place. So we're really critically gonna need their time and attention those first couple of days to get uh, all on the same page. And then that would leave us two more days and then we'll have to decide whether um, you know, we, we want to move them from where they are uh, to somewhere else. But that, that's, that's kind of um, the plan right now. Okay, so a lot of options under discussion, but maybe yeah. moving them forward or back, and maybe moving the other days forward or back. Maybe, yeah. maybe the content pivots. Um, yeah, okay. You know, one, one scenario that we've discussed is, um, and of course, we've traditionally used, uh, we have uh, Monday, extended Mondays, which provides us some, when we're physically present, provides us an opportunity for the different um, teacher leader groups to meet and do some professional development. So if we are um, fully virtual or a hybrid, we have to better understand how we're gonna utilize that contractual time. Uh, but the other piece too is um, we had several half days throughout the year and how, how might that look? One scenario, one possible scenario for the fall, um, and this shouldn't come to, uh, to anybody's surprise as a teacher, would be that teachers come back and uh, they physically um, exist on a daily basis here and that they facilitate the instruction and the coordination and the organization of their work right from their, their classrooms. Uh, you, you, know, you can make an argument for the fact that we have robust technology, robust connections, their resources are here, they can properly social distance in an empty classroom, they have other resources available to them, that would give us opportunities to have meetings and do professional development strategically with um, you know, selected groups of teachers. So all those kinds of things are potentially something that we, you know, we will bring into consideration. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments from any, anybody else? All right. So I guess uh, really quickly, the one comment I would make is that uh, I think it's going to be pretty difficult for us to think about uh, the new teacher contract when we still don't know what our look back uh, budget is going to be like. Yeah, I, 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 I totally get what you're saying. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. That, that may be part of our discussion that night. Yeah, we want to be careful about taking this conversation in any other direction right now. Yeah. Denise, do you have a comment? Uh, no, except that I should think the responsibilities of the teachers would remain relatively the same. But we can discuss exactly. this at another time. Yeah. Right, right. No. So. Sometime later, oh, raise hand. I'm going to raise my hand. Raise your hand. I'm raising my hand. Muriel has her hand up. <laughs> I can go, Muriel. Sometime later in the summer, is it possible for Craig and I to meet with the new, or, you know, the new buildings and grounds fellow and, and see what's been done and, and meet him and so on and so forth? Yeah, I already told him that one of the things um, in short order would be to bring the facilities committee together. So yeah, okay. Meet the members and we can certainly do that. Okay. Mike, if you wouldn't mind making a note of that. Sure.
right. Did we already do motions on this one? <laughs> yeah, we started. We, did. That. we, had, a, we had we had, a, we had um, a first and a second motion. We just need all in favor. Any opposed? Yeah, I didn't know if Mike had something he wanted to add, and Matt had his hand up before. Was that just uh, waving? Well, um, you know, in terms of teacher responsibility, yes. Um, of course, they have the same um, uh, uh, employee, you know, employed relationship responsibilities and um, expectations. But the um, the needs of students are um, radically different in a remote learning scenario, um, and I that should never be uh, understated, really. Um, and and it it has a real impact on the teachers. Um, you know, it, it's so I. <laughs> I would never want to say that the teacher's responsibilities, you know, are the same. Um, but um, that's aside from this, uh, this PD issue here. Yeah, I think that's part of what, that's why I wanted to get together. Um, you know, I thought it'd be better in person than, than uh, Zoom and uh, we can discuss our folks. You know, they are our folks, they're part of our team. And I uh, thought it would be better to right. speak in person. So um, well, I'm going to move on from that. Oh, Beth, is that your hand up or did you just got a cramp? No, no, that was my hand up. Um, <laughs> okay. I, you know, with, yes, the, um, the responsibilities are the same, but the delivery would be quite, is quite different if you're doing it in a classroom versus whether you're doing it virtually. And I think that's something that we need to keep in mind because I know the teachers are feeling that way and maybe some special training to help with the best way to, and, I, and I'm, I'm just saying within the, you know, the, the confines of what our professional development is, I think that that is something that would be appreciated. I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I think it would be something that would be appreciated on how to go about delivering if it is virtual. Because I think it is very different. Okay. Are we, everybody make their comments and concerns? And move on. Can I, uh, everybody in favor? With an aye. aye. Anybody opposed? We're moving on. R7. Be resolved that the Board of Education accept the consensus agenda O through Q of the July 7, 2020 business meeting as written. Can I get a motion? So moved. Second. 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 Any questions or comments in this category? All in favor? Uh, I, I do have a couple of comments. I, I should have raised my oh, hand. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I missed your hand again. Go ahead, um, Beth. I guess the, th the, the thing that I'm wondering is, you know, with some of these off-site sites, if the kids aren't going, are we still paying the same amount, let's say, if it goes for four or five months and the services aren't being delivered? Have have those services ever been prorated, Sal? Well, mo so most of those agencies pr tried or attempted um, to provide um, virtual experiences as well. So um, we, I, you know, we'll have to certainly take a closer look at that to the extent that I think the fidelity. If we have to judge, you know, it's a very it's a very difficult population. You know, I um, my wife's a speech path, and she's having a you know, a much more difficult time engaging students um, remotely than she would if she had them in front of them. So I think there's some challenges there. Um, but I know there was the, the outplay students, those agencies attempted to provide the same type of remote instruction and were required to as, as our teachers did. Um, in the cases where we didn't feel that they delivered um, what they were contracted to do, um, one of the um, service providers um, had, had had graciously negotiated with us to work this summer um, for no additional fee. So understanding that some several of the sessions didn't really take place as planned, they 
um, have extended their services into the summer for, for those students with, for no additional charge. So, um, but I want to be careful on how I answer that because I, I do think. Yeah, I'm, I'm just, uh, it was just a thought that came through my mind. If it was a long extended period for a month or so, I mean, I, I understand the speech pathology. My daughter-in-law went through the same thing. But even special education teachers too. Yeah. You know, it's 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 a much different world for some of our uh, more challenged students who, you know, and, and again, very you know, various support systems at home, too. Beth, is your hand your hand still up, Beth? I'll get oh. it. Okay, just wanted to make sure I didn't skip by. Uh, is yep. everybody in favor? Aye. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Everybody thinking. All right, um, before we adjourn, I just, I'm sure Deb is, is the professional. Um, I, uh, is everybody's contact from last year that we still have from last year the same or does anything need to be changed for Deb and then can we add Destiny so I can reach out to everybody? We're going to add Destiny. Mm -hmm. Okay. And everybody else's okay. contacts good? That'll be ready soon. Awesome. Thank you. Do you need me to sign anything? Just the only thing I'm going to reiterate is that anybody who took an oath tonight needs to see me at some point to sign their oath within 30 days. Right. And if for some reason, for convenience sake, we will be together likely on the 21st. So we can make okay. sure that we have those. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, make it in before then. That's perfect. Right. And we'll get all the notices out um, in terms of um, an expected special meeting of the board um, that the board will uh, is anticipating going in immediately into an executive session that no public content will probably be discussed that evening and no actions will be taken um, so that we don't inconvenience anybody from coming to um, a meeting that would not be open to the public. All right, sounds good. Any uh, questions or concerns, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, you guys can text me on my cell phone to, and I can get right back to you usually. Uh, so, um, Let's, uh, you know, uh, hit the ground running. Thanks a lot, everybody. I'm going to uh, ask for a motion to adjourn this meeting. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Oh, I didn't hear anything or see any hands. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Good night. 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 Good night.